So that was pretty cool. So what is this thing? So all that audio that you just heard is actually coming from that high voltage arc. And yes, it is connected to my guitar right through this auxiliary jack right here. So this is my high voltage music player. This thing right here is actually just a big ignition coil from a car. And inside this box here that I designed and 3D printed is all the circuitry required to be able to make this ignition coil play music that's inputted over that auxiliary jack. So I've made multiple high voltage music players and most of the videos I've put out about them has been on TikTok and some of those videos have got over 2 million views. And there's been a ton of you interested wondering how I made this and how it works. So in this video, I'm gonna to try to go over how this works and how I made it. So before I get too far into explaining the theory behind how this thing works, I've got to give you a bit of a disclaimer that this thing could definitely kill you. And it, I wouldn't recommend building one and I don't uh, encourage you to build one. This video and any other videos that I make about this kind of topic is purely for educational entertainment. And it's only for entertainment and educational purposes only. Something like that. But to really understand how this plays music, we're going to have to go through two sets of theory. And the first is going to be just how sound works in general and how we produce it. And the second is going to have to do with how we make high voltage arcs. And then I'm going to talk about how I bridge the gap between those to make this high voltage arc generator play music. So first, let's talk about how sound works. So any sound that you hear is essentially just vibrations through the air around you. This will occur when something like this little tuning fork vibrates and it creates high and low pressure spots in the air that your eardrum is going to pick up as sound waves. And just to expand on this just a little bit further, different notes will occur at different frequencies, as you can see in this chart right here. So, for example, a C4 will occur at 261 hertz. If we go up an octave, like a C5 is 523 hertz. We can go to G4, which is going to occur at 392 hertz. And we can just keep going from there. And we use several different methods to vibrate the air. We could use our voices. Our vocal cords vibrate, pushing the air and vibrations out from our mouths to make different sounds like right now what I'm doing. We do something like an acoustic guitar where the strings vibrate and those vibrations go through the body and they just bounce around inside of that body kind of amplifying the noise and that's why you get that nice loud clear sound from an acoustic guitar. The design of it allows for those sound waves to kind of get amplified as it leaves that center hole on the acoustic guitar. <laughs> Another way that we commonly produce sound is with speakers. Now, a speaker, if you've ever looked at one closely before, you'll see there's two connections at the back that are typically made and connected to whatever the source that the uh, signal's coming from for it. And what it essentially does is it, the whole goal is to vibrate this membrane right here. And when that membrane vibrates, it creates vibrations in the air, which are sound waves you're hearing. So just vibrating it at the frequencies that we want uh, makes different sounds occur. Okay, so that's how sound is put through the air, but, but how do we get the signal sent to the speaker? And this is going to be kind of fundamentally leading into how I made the high voltage arc generator go. So how do we pull that membrane on the speaker in and out to create the vibrations that push the air? So the speaker is fundamentally going to be very similar to how the high voltage arc generator works. It's just, we'll just start off with understanding this before we move on to the high voltage, which has one more theoretical step in it. So we'll get to that in just a second. For a speaker to work, it requires two types of magnets. One is a permanent magnet, which is on the back here. I can take a little bolt or something and I can stick it on there. You can see that it is a permanent magnet. And then it requires an electromagnet, which is going to be a coil of wire. And so this right here is a coil of wire. Right now, it does not produce a magnetic field. As you can see, the bolt does not want to stay in there. But if I take a power source, like a 9 volt battery, and I stick it on to the two connection leads on to that coil with that bolt there. Let's see if I can do this all in one shot here. You watch how this bolt is going to get sucked up into it. And that's because this coil generates a magnetic field, which is going to pull the bolt up. So here's battery. I'm just going to touch it to the uh, two connections here. You can see it pulls that bolt up. Now, as soon as I take the battery off, the bolt's going to drop. That is because the magnetic field stops being produced when there's no more current flowing through the coil. And this is the current source. So your speaker takes this signal and it's able to make it into sound waves just by vibrating the diaphragm. And like I touched on before, there's going to be a permanent magnet that it's going to act against. 
and the actual diaphragm itself is connected to that coil. The coil could also be called a solenoid because it moves when you apply electrical current to the coil, and because it's acting against that permanent magnet relative to the signal that's being sent to it. As long as that signal is being sent at the same frequency that a sound wave occurs at, then it will vibrate the air at the same frequency, creating sound waves, and that is essentially just how a speaker works. Let's take the 9 volt battery and let's touch it right to the two connections of the speaker and we can watch what happens here. So you can see it pushing in and out and you can hear that staticky noise as I move the uh, power source across those speaker coil windings. So that is how we generate sound from a speaker. I take that same signal and I use it for my high voltage arc generators. And here's how that works. So we know that we have to have the ability to vibrate the air to create sound. Now, have you ever had a static shock before? And most of the time, if the room's quiet, you'll actually hear the little noise of the spark jumping from your finger to the doorknob or whatever else you're, you're touching. So that noise that you hear when the spark jumps is because that little pocket of superheated air expands so quickly, it creates a pulse in the air. So theoretically, if we could take that pulse and operate it at the same frequency that we operate a speaker at, then theoretically we could make it play music the same way we could a speaker. Now granted, quality is a little bit harder to control when we're talking about electrical arcs, and you're kind of bound to have a bit more of a staticky, backgroundy kind of a noise, so I, I wouldn't build one of these expecting to have crystal clear, beautiful sound, but I would build one just to, for proof of concept. It's really cool, it's great for visuals, and for something like guitar, I mean the distortion that you get naturally with this kind of a setup it sounds really cool for like a rock setting we're almost there with taking the theory that we have and applying it to a high voltage music player we just need to have one more piece of electrical theory and that has to do with how we generate high voltage okay so we already talked about how when you send current through a coil of wire it creates electromagnetic field and that generates stored energy in the form of that field so this so these two coils that you're seeing right now is pretty much just a really simple diagram of a basic transformer which is uh, something that's used pretty much everywhere in uh, your house uh, electronics pretty much everywhere so what happens in a transformer is we pass current through the primary coil which has less windings than the secondary, and it generates that electromagnetic field. So if that field is put in the proximity of another coil, that electromagnetic field will actually induce current flow in the secondary coil. And the amount of windings that we have in the secondary coil when compared to the primary will determine the output voltage. So if we had twice as many windings in the secondary as the primary, then we would expect our voltage to be doubled on the output of the secondary when compared to the input of the primary coil. So let's make that ratio a little bit bigger. Let's say that we have 100 windings on our primary, and then let's say we have 10,000 windings on our secondary. Well, that ratio is actually 1 to 100. So there is 100 times more windings on our secondary than our primary. So that means that our input voltage would be expected to be times 100 on the output of our secondary. And that is essentially how an ignition coil works. So all I did was built a circuit that takes a signal from a guitar or a piano or something and it puts current through the primary windings of the coil at the same frequency as the audio signal and that makes that high voltage arc occur at the same frequency as the audio signal making the sound from the guitar or the piano come out through the high voltage arc. Now this is very basic theory there is a few more complicated pieces involved with this as well as a lot of possible dangers which I talked about previously. So if you're not 100% confident working with something like this or aren't quite sure what I'm talking about, it's best just to maybe subscribe to my channel, just stick around, watch my videos because I go through this kind of stuff a lot. So I mentioned earlier that I take that speaker signal and I attach it to my ignition coils to make it play music. Now there's one circuit I actually need to build that sits in the middle between the two. And I'm not gonna show you that in this video, it will be in the next video, which is being released the same time as this one. So it's already on my channel. You can head over there to watch it after this one. That video contains the actual build, the wiring diagram, the components. I didn't wanna include that in this video because I think there's a lot of people who are gonna be interested in hearing the theory about how it works, seeing it in operation, but they're not gonna be super interested in just watching me build the circuit and learning how I built it with what components. If you are interested in that part of it, I put it in a separate video just so you could see that one um, and I didn't have to bore everybody else with that information in this video. Here's a couple of really popular requested songs that I've received on TikTok and I'll play a couple here. 
And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Feel free to like and subscribe. And uh, if you're interested in learning how to build the circuit, just head over to the part two, which is on my channel. Take it easy, guys. Stay creative and enjoy.